subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon, so you never miss any video from my channel. Yo! Well now, Cam TV, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, share, share all cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, uh, you know, the Panthers have been, you know, kind of active recently. Um, uh, they did, you know, a few moves that, uh, you know, we got to talk about. And um, one move I think they should do that I don't think they will, but I definitely think they should. So, let's get started. So, the first order of business, the uh, Panthers, they did a move, um, which is kind of expected. They uh, re-signed the Darius Gunter. And the mini sale told you total told both to like one year deals. I mean, I think Gunter's deal could go up to like 1.6 million. They're, they're both really small deals. And um, they're kind of expected, obviously, because uh, they used to be on the team. Nobody really pursued them both. And um, for those of you in my comment section that were saying, you know, Ross Cockrell and Denoris Cersei was debt moves, I disagree. This is a debt move. Getting Ladarius Gunter, who's probably not going to start, let's be honest, he's probably not going to start. And getting that means to the total after you got, you know, Taylor Moten and uh, Jeremy Sorelli's. Uh, I think his name is Sorelli's. I don't remember how to say his last name. But um, Jeremiah Sorelli's, that is a dead move because you already have the guard position, you know, solidified. You even got Taylor Moten who probably, gonna, you know, they're going to probably compete Taylor Moten and Jeremiah. Um, and now you get me to the total who's obviously is a dead move. You know what I'm saying? And this Ladarius Gunter move, that's a dead move because you got James Bradbury. You got Kevin Seymour, you got Ross Cockrell, you know, so you got Kevin Munlin. He's probably gonna be a debt player, a rotational player. Those are debt moves, you know what I'm saying? The Norris Cersei, he's gonna be a starter, you know. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure he's starting a uh, strong safety, so I wouldn't be, uh, like, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't be surprised if we draft a free safety, you know what I'm saying, because Colin Jones is starting in that position, and I know they don't want him to start there. So those are debt moves for the, for the people who are like, oh, this is just debt, this is just debt. That's not true. And for the other person in the comment section, because I do read your comments, obviously, um, I, you know, and sometimes I, I talk about them in the videos. But other person in the comment section who uh, said that we couldn't get Eric Reed because Ron Rivera, you know, didn't like players who kneeled, that is not true. Because Julius Peppers, you forget, went into the locker room during one of the national anthems because of how he felt. And they talked about him, you know, through the season and stuff like that, whatever. But, so I don't think that was what stopped it. I just think, you know, because of his protesting and everything like that, whatever. They didn't necessarily want him. And I don't think it's a raw very, you know what I'm saying, thing. I think it's a higher up thing. So that's just my opinion. But these these moves, I have no problem with them. They're good deals. Um, you know, and I expected them, man. Darius Gunter, he, you know, he's an all right player. I think he's, you know, a good rotational guy. He's a taller corner. So he's pretty good. And I mean, he's still total. Even though I don't like him because we wasted a draft pick on him a few years ago and he's never lived up to that bill. I mean, as a rotational player, sure, whatever. And the other move the Panthers made. They picked up Shaq Thompson's fifth-year option. And I like this move because I like Shaq. Uh, you know, before the draft, before you know, we went into the draft that year, I was rooting for Shaq, man. I thought Shaq was going to be a good player. I thought, you know what I'm saying, he can do multiple things, which he can. And, you know, I remember they was like, oh, he's a tweener. He's this. He's that. While the Panthers select him, they already have linebackers. That's one thing I definitely do agree with the Panthers. They, they plan ahead. You know what I'm saying? Because Thomas Davis is getting older. And um, Shaq Thompson was a is a get, very good linebacker, and he's he's shown that through the years in his development. So I'm happy about that. It's, it's like I said again, it's something that was expected. I'm pretty sure they're not gonna let Shaq walk. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, the problem I have is that you know we're gonna have to pay him soon. So I don't know how where we're gonna find the money. Hopefully, you know, like I know Thomas is gonna retire next year, and Ryan's gonna retire next year. So hopefully, we can work out a contract with him. You know, but uh. I just don't want him to leave because he's a very good player. I think he's great for our system. He's great for our team, and um, he's you know he like he's been very patient, you know. Because let's be honest, man, the first like few years of his career, he was behind Thomas most of the time, you know, and that's because Thomas is obviously a great player, you know, Hall of Famer in my opinion. Um, but he was a great player, and um, you know, he had to be behind Thomas most of the time. And now, you know, he's kind of like, last year they kind of like gave him more reps, you know, more snaps, whatever. And this year, I think he's going to take majority of the snaps. Thomas is going to be more of a rotational role. So, you know, that's that's how I see it, whatever. But I'm happy for Shaq. I think Shaq is definitely needed, whatever. I think Luke Kinkley needs somebody to, you know, roll with, whatever. And I think Shaq can be that. And, you know, there'll be two young linebackers for a long period of time. 
Um, I don't know what we're going to do because we usually run a 4-3. So I don't know if we're going to get another linebacker in the draft sometime or what. Because, you know, let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? That's, you, you, you reduce it in the 4-3 base set. Um, you know, we rarely play nickel because we have linebackers that are very good at coverage and, and rangy. And, they can, you know, they're pretty good. So I wonder how we're going to do that when Thomas retires. You know, um, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll draft with another linebacker sometime. But um, obviously that's not one of our glaring needs. So. Shaq Thompson, fifth-year option, got picked up. He's a really good player. Um, pro football focus shows that he's a really good player. So I'm happy for Shaq. And it's something that, like I said, is expected. But it's good to see. But the main thing I want to talk about is this. Now, the New York football giants are looking to trade Odell Beckham Jr. Now, this is monumental. I ain't gonna lie. This is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, that he's up on the trading block. You know what I'm saying? And they're saying they want no less than the first. This is how I feel. This is why I think the Panthers... Now, mind you, listen. Before I go into my whole spiel. One, I know the Panthers don't like people with character issues. And he definitely has his character issues. But, you know, he's an emotional guy, you know. But he's a very dominant player. That's one. Two, you know, I know they had their issues with him before. With the Josh Norman thing, whatever. It's not third. But again, he is a dynamic player. And he could be a game changer for us. So now, let me get into my whole spiel. The New York Football Giants said they'll listen to offers and they want no less than a first round draft pick. Now, mind you, I'm pretty hesitant on first rounders. First rounders, you can get some ballers in the first round. You know what I'm saying? But here's my thing, right? Odell Beckham Jr. Okay, let's, let's have it speaking, right? Let's say we go in the draft because, you know, this is probably what we're going to do or, you know, maybe something to that effect. We're probably going to draft and get a receiver with a first round pick. Maybe a Christian Kirk. Maybe a Courtney Sutton, hopefully, maybe even Calvin Ridley if he falls, which I doubt. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a uh, DJ Moore or um, a James Washington or a Anthony Miller, whatever, you know? So we're going to spend a first round draft pick on a receiver. Now, they might be good receivers, they might not. You know, that, that's always a possibility, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's definitely something that could happen. Now, mind you, Odell Beckham. We know what he is. You know what I'm saying? We know he has his character issues and all that stuff. We know that. But we also know that when he has the ball in his hands, he's electric. He's, he's a great receiver. You know what I'm saying? He's very good at catching the ball. He's just a good player. You know what I'm saying? Very good player, actually. And we need a dynamic receiver, which we've been talking about for forever. You know, now. We need a dominant you know, receiver that you know, could be a game changer for us. Now, mind you, we have a first-round pick. We're probably going to use a receiver anyways, right? We have two seventh round picks and we have two third round picks. This is what I'm proposing. Take our first round, which we're going to probably use on receiver anyways. Take our um, third, one of our third rounds and one of our seventh rounds and offer it. See what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Because if we do that, we'll have our receiver for the future sold, right? We would um, we will have still our second round pick. We'll still have our third round pick. We don't have a fourth round pick. Now, this is what we will do, right? Because we have a fifth, sixth, and seventh, which usually don't, you know, come out to anything, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Trade our fifth and sixth and try to trade, uh, trade back into the third, man. You know what I'm saying? Try to trade back into the bottom of the third. You know what I'm saying? Get a pick, and then we won't have no draft pick for the fourth, fifth, and sixth round. But, you know, we got two third rounders. We got Odell Beckham. We got a second round pick, and we got a seventh round pick. That's a good situation. You know what I'm saying? And we don't have... Use any of the picks from next uh, next year, or whatever. So I think that'll be a good situation. And Odell Beckham in our system would be a game changer. You know what I'm saying? We could get a dominant, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, dominant uh, receiver with a, basically the first pick. We'll be able to get a running back, the second pick. We'll be able to get, you know what I'm saying, that safety, whatever, or something, a cornerback, or whatever. And we get another, another person with the third pick. You know what I'm saying? That would be a great lineup for us. You know what I'm saying? I think, and you know, Cam Newton. Would be definitely be happy, you know what I'm saying? Because obviously we got a dynamic receiver for him that he can, you know, play with for years to come. And you know what I'm saying? It'll just be a better situation for us. Now, mind you, obviously, I know you guys are gonna talk about his character issues, his flaws, and everything like that, whatever. I know, you know what I'm saying? I understand, you know what I'm saying? I understand that he's not the greatest uh, person, you feel me? But, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know, I, you can't, I can't necessarily say he's gonna affect winning. But I definitely think he will. I think the Giants, the reason why he didn't affect winning the Giants because the Giants organization, they didn't really have a good defense. They, they had no run game. Eli Manning throws a lot of picks, and his line was suspect. But with our situation, we're only like a few pieces away. You know what I'm saying? I think 
core team is pretty well constructed. Our line, I think, is good. Our D-line is good. Our linebackers are good. Our quarterback is good. You know what I'm saying? The parts we need to work on is our receivers, our running backs, and our secondary. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. And for now, I, I think that would be a, a good situation, man. I think Odell Beckham will come to our team. And, you know, I think also if you get him out of that New York market, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what really got him crazy, too, is the New York market, the big city. Get him away from that, man. Carolina is not, you know, not like New York, obviously. So get him away from that. Get him in, you know what I'm saying, a situation where he's not going to be traveling and meeting all these celebrities all, you know, all the time, whatever. Get him in Carolina, whatever. He'll be a dominant receiver for years to come. And we can literally have a, a receiver that compete with Julio, Julio Jones, Mike Evans, and Michael Thomas. I think that'll be a really good plan. I think it's not, you know, saying not going to handicap us for years to come. And plus, you know, we could tell them next year, you know, we'll be able to work out a contract with you because we'll have more money, you know. So I definitely think uh, that's what we should try to do. I think it'll be a good look for us. I think we'll be, you know, saying it'll be very beneficial. I, the only thing I, I have an issue with is his his temperament and everything like that, whatever. But I think. With a different environment, he might be he might be different. You know what I'm saying? I think I think sometimes it's a change of scenery, like uh, you know, like Brandon Marshall, for instance. Brandon Marshall, when he was in Miami, had a lot of issues, a lot of character issues, whatever. He was able to change himself once he went to Chicago and you know all these other places. He hasn't been in those kind of situations or issues, you know, since then. You know what I'm saying? So I think Odell, if you put him in a different situation, different setting, I think he'll be a dominant player. And I don't think he'll have that many. I, I mean, obviously you can't change him completely. He's gonna have his little issues, but. I don't think it'll be as egregious as they are now. So that's my theory. You know what I'm saying? Get in the comment section. Obviously, tell me what y'all think about the theory. If I hate it, I like it. Get in the comment section. I want to know because obviously, you know, I think it's a pretty good idea. You know what I'm saying? It might, it might work, but we'll see what happens. Well, that's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this with y'all. Cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, get in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the Shaq Thompson thing because I'm pretty sure everybody's going to love that. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure everybody's going to love us picking up the fifth year option. That's just my opinion. If you don't love it, tell me why. Tell, let me know about the Darius Gunter thing, you know what I'm saying, and Emilio Solotolu. Obviously, the depth players, but do you feel like we should re-sign them? I think the deals are pretty good, and you know what I'm saying, they won't get no, nobody else to hit them up, so we might as well re-sign them, you know what I'm saying? They're all our own players, so I ain't mad at that. And tell me what you think about the Odell Beckham situation. Give me a scenario that you think would work to get Odell Beckham that wouldn't like destroy us for three years or something like that, whatever. I want, I want sensible ideas and sensible, you know, uh, situation that we can get Odell Beckham from the Giants. Get in the comment section, man. Share this with your Panther friends and fr friends and family. You know what I'm saying? And other Panther fans. Panther Nation, I rock with y'all and keep pounding. And I will see y'all next time.